when we go into properties that are retrofitted, they haven't had meters before, and we add meters to them, within three months, the overall bill drops between 20 and 30%. Because all of this human nature kicks in and people now start caring for how much they actually use. Welcome to the Rental Property Owner and Real Estate Investor Podcast, brought to you by the Rental Property Owners Association, where real estate investors have found success since 1968. I'm your host, Brian Hamrick from Hamrick Investment Group. This episode is sponsored by Green Property Management, managing everything from single family homes to apartment complexes in the West Michigan area. Find out more at greenpropertymgt.com. And RCB and Associates, helping real estate investors and small business owners navigate the complex world of health insurance and Medicare benefits at rcbassociatesllc.com. Hello and welcome to episode 447. One of the biggest expenses in owning rental property is the cost of utilities, electric, gas, water, sewer, and trash. And the better we understand these costs and how to control them, the greater our profit potential can be. Often tenants are responsible for paying their own utilities, but there are many owners who pay these costs on behalf of the tenants because of the way the systems are split and billed by various providers. Today, we're going to discuss how owners can maximize their return on investment through submetering and utility billing with Kelly Kuntz, the president of Submeter Solutions. Kelly, thanks for joining us today. Oh, I'm happy to be here today, Brian. Thank you. Help set the stage for our listeners. I mean, when we talk about submetering and controlling our utility costs, what, what does that mean to you? Like, where should we start in thinking about that idea? Well, Brian, I think you gave it a great lead in. Anybody who is owning or managing a multifamily property is faced with a decision on how they're going to manage one of their most expensive costs and expenses on their P&L, and that's utilities. It's not uncommon, probably using, um, say, water and sewer as the best example, but it is certainly not uncommon for a utility to simply have a single meter at the property, and they're sending a bill to to the property itself rather than individually to residents. So we see that owners, managers of multifamilies have to decide, well, am I going to try to cover that cost in my monthly rents? to my residents. Maybe they're a little bit more sophisticated and they've actually instituted a program of splitting that bill from a resident from the utilities to the residents on a calculation, a mathematical calculation. The industry um, refers to that as a rubs process, a ratio utility billing system. That's a little better than trying to capture that within just the uh, monthly rental fee. But we have a third option that we think is really the very best, and that is actually metering every unit at the property. That's what submetering is about. We're, sent, we're putting a meter on after the utilities meter so we can actually measure exactly how much of that utility is being used by the residents. And then we can then create a bill that is exactly matching what their usage is. So Brian, the advantages of going that third method are number one, you eliminate some of those squabbles of, hey, I, this isn't fair. I'm paying my the waste that my neighbor is using. They're now the residents empowered to only pay for what they actually use. And in addition to that, the, the owner is can be confident that he's going to be able to recover his costs directly and, and accurately. He's not going to undercover. And even as importantly, he's not going to overcharge because there's a lot of laws throughout the U.S. that don't allow you to charge more than you should be with those residents. So this is a way for the owner to get those costs from the from their residents and to make sure that they're super accurate. I do want to talk about rubs because... When I started investing in real estate, and I'm here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, a lot of the properties I was buying downtown were historic, built over 100 years ago. The, the meters were not split. There was one meter for five units, or, or in, in one building, I have one meter for 96 units. 
And so th- that's definitely an issue that presents itself. Now, the philosophy that I started with is not the same as the philosophy I have now. The philosophy that I started with, and I think a lot of rental property owners have, is let's just charge a little higher rent and that will cover our utility costs, the owner's utility costs. And that makes sense on the surface. But what I found, and this was a this was kind of a key moment in realizing this and implementing it, what I found is that residents, they know, they're savvy enough to know that utility costs are separate from rent. And when you include them in rent, all they see is a higher rent number. You know, so they don't, they're going to go to somewhere else where maybe they're paying utilities and the rent's a little bit lower, but cumulatively it's a higher amount per month. They're going to go for that before they go for a higher rent at your property. So there's a psychological thing there. You're spot on with that, Brian. In addition to just the advantage from marketing your property with a potentially lower initial rent fee, I think to play on that psychological aspect of this is really key. When a resident doesn't see the water or sewer in any way, whether it's rubs or submetered, they tend to think water's free. And when water is free and like, you know, how we do things when it's free to us, we don't conserve it. We're not careful with it. So the opportunity to connect the actual utility itself with a charge is downright magical when, when you can make that happen. What's fun for us, Brian, and clearly rubs is better, in our opinion, than simply putting it into the monthly rent. That's an advantage. You are breaking it out. The residents are now seeing that they are paying something. And that helps them conserve it, too, because if they're not paying utilities in any way, they might run the air conditioner all day long, all weekend long, even if they're gone, leave their TV on, open a win- window in the winter time, <laughs> you know, open, you know, turn, I mean, all kinds of crazy things that, that people do. But if they're paying and participating in the cost of those utilities, they tend to be more careful about how they utilize those utilities. Let's say it's a 30 unit of property and they're getting a rubs bill for one thirtieth of that or based on occupancy or something. And we do a lot of rubs billing. Don't get me wrong. We, we're happy to do billing that way, have a lot of clients that, that that are making that step that way. But even the savvy ones that understand the math behind how that bill comes to them, they're really only able to influence that uh, price one thirtieth of the action. The other 29 neighbors of theirs are really also really more, more than them impacting what that amount is for the electricity, for their air conditioning or the water or whatnot. So that third option that we're talking about, that submetering is where you really truly can get that one-to-one. Your action is the only thing that's going to influence the cost of my bill. And what's fun to tell you about, Brian, is that when we go into properties that are retrofitted, they haven't had meters before, and we add meters to them, within three months, the overall bill drops between 20 and 30 percent because all of this human nature kicks in and people now start caring for how much they actually use. So not only are you offsetting what the owner is paying because the tenants are now paying it, but cumulatively what the tenants are paying compared to what it was three months earlier has dropped by, what'd you say, 20, 30 percent? 20, 30 percent. Because that's how much more aware they are of the utilities that they're using. Exactly right. And that's always fun for us. We get skeptical people go, oh, it probably can't drop that much. And many times it's even more than that. So, and, and you know, this is good for everyone. It's good for residents who now have control on it. It's good for clearly for the owner manager of the property who's got their arms around this. And honestly, it's even good for our communities and our the society in general that we're conserving and managing what are becoming, ever, you know, increasingly precious commodities, whether it's water or electricity or gas. I do want to follow up on the 96 unit. We made a deliberate decision three years ago and we were doing a rub. So we took kind of figured out, okay, what's the square footage of the building? You take a percentage of that for the unit size. And then you take that percentage against the, the overall bill. 
over a 12 month period. And we have actually generated in utility reimbursements, and not profit, but reimbursements for the utilities over $100,000 a year from doing the rubs program. And that's pretty powerful. That's $100,000 we would not have uh, added to our net operating income had we not started employing rubs. So now we're doing it on other properties that have similar issues. And that, you know, if you really attack it deliberately in your management company or the way you present it, if you're managing yourself, the way you present it to the residents, you, you we really haven't gotten any pushback on that because it's just an accepted thing. Residents are going to have to pay for the utilities. That's really well said, Brian. We are very much encourage rubs versus just trying to cover this in your monthly fee. Let's let me maybe presume what most people like may be thinking now, though, like, well, okay, but that sounds expensive to be going from rubs to the submetering part. Boy, we're talking about adding meters. Tell us what it means in reality to to start submeter submetering. Absolutely. And there there clearly are some upfront costs, but we find, depending on how you're currently recovering costs, that you know, the return on investment on this can actually be a year or less, depending on how your circumstance is, but it all begins with a water meter or a gas meter or an electric meter. If Let's stick with water since it's probably the most common for most folks. That particular meter that we would sell you is a very accurate utility grade meter in terms of its accuracy, but it's a small compact one that isn't that expensive. We're not talking about putting it in a pit box underground outside. It's usually installed in the unit and and the meter and a, a, an electronic receiver that's going to send that um, signal from the meter read, and we'll talk about that in a minute, together is going to be less than $120 per unit for that hardware. So the for in terms of hardware in every unit, you can use $120. Similarly, if we're talking a gas meter, that's going to be less than $300. And we're talking less than a, or on an electric meter, uh, depending on the type, that's going to be less than $400 for the meter itself. I'm thinking of my units and like, am I going to have to rip open walls, get under the floors? I mean, how do I know where to put these meters so that they're reading the usage accurately. And then you mentioned that they're sending an electronic signal. Do they also then have to be connected to AC so that they continue? So I don't have to keep changing batteries. So we'll start with where, say, a water meter goes. That's usually the biggest question people have. You know, today, newer buildings have been designed and built so that there is a single water line going into each unit with a shutoff valve. And that's where the meter would go is right after the shutoff valve. But say you have an older building that was built in the 70s or 80s or even earlier than that. And the wall, the, the plumbing shared in the walls back to back. Most of those properties, though, still have a hot water heater in every unit that is, in effect, separated the hot water at every unit. So even if you have an older style building that doesn't have a single water supply line, we can still offer you a submetering strategy where you would be metering the hot water. And our studies have shown that if you're measuring hot water for somebody in, through the meter, that's 50 50 to 60% of the overall water that an apartment typically uses. So it's not perfect because you're not getting 100%, but you are measuring enough of the water that you could then apply that with an allocation-based method. You're going to recover the full costs of your water and sewer, and you are going to do that magic that we talked about earlier of affecting people's behavior because it's based on their hot water use. That requires a little bit of math there to figure out, okay, if 50% of is going to hot water, then there's a calculation that's required. But a lot of my properties have boilers in the basement that are providing the hot water throughout the building. What do you do in that case? Those are a little more challenging, but we do have some methods to use to submeter with a um, boiler system. If there's if there's drops coming off of that hot water circulated system throughout the building, we have hot water meters that we can add. It's very common, for instance, where our office is in Seattle on the West Coast, new construction apartment buildings on the West Coast in California, Oregon, and Washington are now 
using central boiler systems. And when we install meters, we install both a one hot and one cold meter in every unit because of that central boiler system. So typically there is a method when we hear about the details of your property where we can split it up. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about green property management. Not only do they manage everything from single family homes to apartment complexes in the West Michigan area, they also manage my entire portfolio. So I can tell you from personal experience that their unique flat fee management style is worth a closer look. If you feel that your property isn't operating to its fullest potential, then green property management can help you take a holistic approach that will save you money, eliminate your headaches, and increase your net income. And if you're a property property manager interested in applying green property management's model, give them a call at 1-866-95-GREEN or visit them on the web at greenpropertymgt.com. If you're thinking of leaving your W-2 job and becoming a full-time real estate investor, one of the greatest costs you must consider is health care for you and your family. When I made this transition myself, I found the whole health care insurance process to be confusing and frustrating. That's why I'm glad I met Chad Creasy at RCB and Associates. Chad is a professional health insurance agent who helps real estate investors and small business owners understand and choose their best health care options. And best of all, his services are covered by the insurance company and won't cost you a dime. If you live in Michigan and are expecting a change in your health care insurance coverage for any reason or losing employer coverage or transitioning into Medicare, then you owe it to yourself to contact Chad Creasy at rcbassociatesllc.com. What about the electronic signal? I mean, are we hooking these up to AC? No, we're not. You know, tip, you, there's not a, you, typically a convenient wall outlet plug right next to the plumbing where you're going to put this water meter, but that's okay. The, either the meter has a built-in transceiver or a simply wired low voltage uh, transceiver that are powered with lithium batteries that have 10 year battery life. So this is not something that every six months you got to go around and change the batteries on it. Yes, you will need to change them, but that's only after 10 years and the system itself will alert you when a battery level is getting low. So you have plenty of advanced warning when it's time to go through your building, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, change up the, change the batteries. I'm still hazy on where the meter exists. Is it something the tenant can see in the unit? Is it behind the walls? I mean, where would you put these meters? The short answer to that is it depends on the specifics. We see them uh, installed in garages, if that's where the shutoff valve is, if they have one. It could be in uh, where the washer dryer is or the hot water heater is, and it could be exposed in a closet or it could be behind a door. If we have to cut into the wall, the installing plumber, maybe they'll put some an access panel there in front of it. So there can be access to it if needed, but it's close behind a door. Every property has got a little bit of uniqueness on how that works. And one of the things that we're really big on is we we will work with your plumber if you have one, or if you need us to help you find one, we'll do that. But we're going to make sure that we don't just send you equipment only and walk away and go, this is your problem. We're not done with our part of the job till it's all working. The, everything's been installed properly and fully commissioned. Have you run into situations where you can't install install the submeters? Yes. There are times when somebody calls us with a, uh, a central boiler in a 1940s building and there is no real practical way to install meters. And that's pretty rare, but it does happen. And I would be fooling you to say every property out there can be easily submetered. I probably have several of those properties. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would love, Brian, to have a quick conversation with you on one or two of those. And what we typically find is folks that go, oh, this this is probably not submeterable. We have been able to offer them some really good options. So love to talk to you or any of your, your listeners. If they are thinking that way, challenge us. That's free. We'll put a proposal together for you and we'll be honest. We'll tell you, no, this doesn't make sense for you. But I would surprise be, I think you'd be surprised that it it's something that we can we likely can give you an option for. What's the messaging to the residents who see these meters going in and now, okay, you're going to pay your rent and you're going to pay your utilities on top of that. Like, what, how, how do you prep your owners for having those conversations with the residents? I think all of your listeners know, and if, certainly if they're uh, experienced 
landlords that people don't like change. And if they've been used to having water, quote unquote, free to them, and now they see somebody putting a meter, what does all this mean? So we're, we are really big on promoting, communicating to your residents, giving them an opportunity to know what this is about. And the key message, Brian, is simply uh, uh, making sure that you're letting your residents know they're already paying for that utility, whether it's in the rent or in rubs. It's it's already being paid for, but they have no control currently. But with that meter, you're empowering them now to actually truly have control on how much their bill is actually going to be. If they're that resident that doesn't, you know, take a lot of showers, washes the dishes only once a week, they're going to have a really low bill. And, and so I think that when you are careful about giving the whole story to the residents, that you that goes a long way to going through that change. And we found that you know, as we turn over units and bring new residents in, we just make it a fact. Like, this is your rent. This is you're going to pay separate for utilities. And this is because we're doing rubs. It's pretty much a flat fee throughout the year. So this is how much it's going to go to utilities. As current tenants who aren't moving out or moving in renew their lease, then we start slowly implementing it into those residents as well. So it usually takes about three years to really fully get people on board with paying the rubs. Now, I'm sure with the submetering, it might be a little different because the meter's there. You might as well start billing right away. But in which case, what are some of the the laws that might govern that? Because you can't just say, I mean, can you just say, hey, all of a sudden now you got to start paying your utilities? Yeah, I was just about to bring that up. You know, anything in the landlord tenant relationship, of course, has got a fair amount of codes and laws, depending on where you are. And there certainly are some in this uh, realm as well. So I know that our company and others in our industry, that's a really, really important part of our business is that we help to get smart about what maybe a specific law is in your your jurisdiction, a state or even a city law, and make sure that you're in compliance with that. We have an industry database that we use that's very, very helpful. And there's some generalities that that pretty much apply everywhere. And I think the key one is, is that charging your residents for the uh, re- utilities is not a profit center. You're only able to recover the costs. You can't mark that up. And when it, if and when you get into that area, you're exposing yourself to some legal issues. So one thing that we're really careful about when we're setting up a new client is to go through with them to make sure that they're getting their leases up to date. If there's some specific language that needs to be written in there, what will help you with that and pass along any specifics that we know about your area. Have you seen owners get in trouble by implementing it too aggressively? We have seen bad actors in our industry. And, you know, we've been talking so far about the hardware part of getting the meters in place. Part two of our business is that ongoing billing process. And many of our clients will do that in-house, but many others will choose to have a company like ours actually read those meters remotely and prepare bills and send bills to the residents. Those bills can have the, the resident remit their payment directly to the property owner manager, or sometimes they can have them sent to us and then we'll re we'll reimburse the property on a monthly basis for it. So that whole billing service has got some real regulations on it. We pay to do that. And this is really the key thing. We put a small billing service fee on the, on the bill and uh, so that our service to do all that billing and collection of the money, reading the meters remotely is a free to the owner or man because the residents paying us to say a $4 billing fee per month. There are jurisdictions in the country that regulate how much that can be. And there's been some bad actors that will jump that up to 10 or $12. And that's what will land you on the front page of your local newspaper. So we're really careful to make sure that's not going to happen to you. Yeah, so you're very careful about the additional fees that you tack on to the bill. Right. What's that process? Does your company, if you're keeping track of the submetering and the billing, are you really just treating it as if you were the utility company? 
and, and billing, billing a, a very similar type bill. Yep. We do our very best to create the bill that goes to the residents to mirror just as, as much as possible the exact strategy that the utility is billing the property for. So for instance, if there's a base fee or, you know, we'll break out the base fee and do the math appropriately that way, along with usage fees. And if there's a lot of detail on that bill for, say, street lights or taxes and stuff like that, we'll make sure that the individual resident is getting a bill that basically matches what the utility is doing for the property. You know, everyone wants to be green and conserve energy and, you know, help the environment and all that. Does submetering allow for that? Like, are there specific things that might help control the cost of energy? To answer that question, I will talk about something we haven't yet broached, which is when we have a meter now on your water line and you have that data essentially connected up to the cloud where that, that's coming on multiple reads a day and daily reads storing, the systems that are out there now have gotten so mature and so smart that they actually have algorithms built into it that can tell whether there's water constantly running. So the best example of that would be that uh, proverbial toilet flapper that's hung open, the chain's got it open, and that water is just running down the drain through the toilet in one of your residents. And you know, today, even if you're rubs or whatever, you may find out about that maybe in about 45 days when the bill comes up and you see, oh my gosh, why is this an extra $200? Which by the way, is about how much one toilet running is going to cost a month. So, it, but the new systems that we have the ability to send a, an email or a text to the owner or manager or the maintenance person that says, hey, unit 112's got water that's been running constantly for 24 hours. You need to go check that. It's a suspected toilet leak. So we have clients now that are buying our systems largely simply based on that part of the technology alone. And that's both um, economically sound. You're keeping your costs down. And it's, uh, but, you know, say rubs, well, I don't care. I'm going to still pass those costs along anyway to my residents. But man, if we can have every toilet leak lowering that, that 6,000 gallons a month and that two, almost $200 a month of cost, that's just good for our society. I love that it saves energy. I would also send a text to my son to tell him to flush the toilet. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I, no, I don't think so. Well, we'll have to talk to our people about that. Let me know when it does and maybe I'll... System in our system. <laughs> <laughs> so what haven't I asked you about submetering that, that I should be uh, asking you before we wrap it up? I would tell you that you've done a good job kind of covering key, the key basics. We'd be happy to listen to, I think, to your specifics. I think you, what we've talked about, Brian, is there is a little bit of uniqueness for every property. We don't just hold up one water meter and say, this is the one that's going to fit in your property. We're going we're gonna to say, hey, tell us more about what you have. Tell us how the plumbing works or the electricity works. Let's decide whether if it's an electric meter per se, the meter goes in every unit at the distribution panel there, or does it go in a main unit, a main distribution panel? So every property is a little unique. That means every equipment can be customized. We're going to make sure that we get you exactly what you need that's going to work the best for the best value. And then we're going to present to you that and you can make the, and we're also going to help you calculate that return on investment based on some basics about how much you're paying now, what your plans are. If, if you have us say to do the monthly billing, we'll help you with all those numbers. So that's, I think, important thing to leave with your listeners. We are based out of Seattle, but we s cover, you said M Michigan, and we're all over the country. And we'd be happy to talk to your residents, your or owners about your specifics, and then you can make a good decision on your own, whether this makes sense or not. Kelly, how would people find out more about Submeter Solutions? Our company name again is Submeter Solutions and our website, Submeter Solutions with an S at the end.com. You can go there and read all about what we've just discussed. And if you go Submeter Solutions.com slash podcast, we've got a special page set up there where your listeners can 
can fill out a little basic questions about their property. And then we will in turn, give you guys a call and work up a free estimate for you and send that off to you. And that's a really straightforward process. So we'd love to hear from any of your listeners. And what is your favorite hack or app? I've got my sales manager sitting next to me, so he probably might need to cover his ears. But one of the things I hate to do is calculate my mileage for the business expenses. And I have found a couple of years ago, Mile IQ on uh, as an app for my phone that keeps track of where I go and how many miles I drive. And it has turned what used to be a really uh, miserable process of trying to recreate at the end of the month or even the end of the quarter where I've been. And it's a simple swipe left, swipe right. It's a little like a dating app to decide whether it's a business trip or not. So mile IQ, there's my tip of the day for you. Is that mile IQ? Correct. Thanks for coming on the show and talking about submetering. And for any listeners out there who own rental property where you are paying as the owner of the utilities, you really need to consider ha- having your residents pay those utilities for reasons we just discussed. And, and Kelly, I think you you really did a, a great job of explaining how submetering is one of the ways to do that. And thank you so much for coming on the show today and and sharing that strategy with us. I'm just pleased to be able to speak with you and your listeners this morning, Brian, and all the best to you. I want to thank everybody for listening to this episode. I'm your host, Brian Hamrick from Hamrick Investment Group. And you can find out more about me by going to higinvestor.com. That's H-I-G investor.com.